Okay, well, my first question is, um, as an organization, do I really need to invite external SAM practitioners or I can also run assessments with my internal team of experts, assuming that naturally there is one. So uh, what are the pros and cons, I would say, of doing external versus uh, internal SAM assessment? Uh, let's start with Rob, because you went last in the previous round. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I do have some experience with this. Self-assessments are, of course, um, easy to organize and quick. Uh, you don't have to arrange budget. Uh, you got the people. I mean, there's SAM, and which is open source and free. There's this whole guidance in how you can do the self-assessment. So that's great. And also, you really empower a team, a technical team, to look at how they're working, which can be sort of a positive learning effect, some introspection. Um, so it's cheaper, quicker to arrange, fast, it has a learning effect, uh, but it's also uh, relatively inaccurate. Uh, why? Um, well, if you talk about people in a process, about their process, and you ask them questions, they typically will answer in how they would like the process to be, or how the process is supposed to be. It requires interviewing skills, uh, getting to the truth of things to really see how things are really going. Uh, it requires asking questions like, uh, when was the last time you uh, did a threat modeling? Uh, oh, yeah, um, yeah, that was last year. <laughs> uh, but if you ask them, how often do you use threat modeling? With every big change, right? So the truth is sometimes mm -hmm. hard to find when you do self-assessment. Of course, the typical self-assessor is is not an expert in secure software development, so it's hard for them to assess whether, uh, for example, a training is sufficient, uh, regular training. Okay, how I'm going to assess that? Well, every year they watch a video of about uh, an hour about the latest uh, attacks. Okay, we tick the box. That's fair because they don't have the expertise to judge whether that is sufficient or not. But it means that uh, self-assessments will typically be more positive than if you do an external uh, external assessment. Also, because self-assessors are a little bit biased uh, towards <laughs> how they work, because they know that's how they work, and because they have sort of their pride uh, and the reputation of themselves and their colleagues to protect. So it's almost like snitching if you're going to say that, uh, well, our threat modeling actually uh, is not really good. So people are biased, and that's also fair. It's just part of the game. You really cannot change that if you do a self-assessment. And last but not least, um, if people do a self-assessment, you cannot expect really to have any recommendations from that other than the, you know, the, the self-explanatory ones. Mm -hmm. uh, we should do threat modeling. Uh, Every uh, every time we do a big change, but not how to do this, uh, and an external assessor can help. You know, setting that roadmap and depending on the context, really uh, pinpoint how exactly these improvements uh, should be made. Thanks, Rob. That was very exhaustive, I would say. So uh, I would like to add something up to that question and move to Maxim. Um, Maxim, taking that information into account, how about combining uh, self-assessments with expert interviews? And how about trying to go for best of the two worlds? Because at the end of the day, the external assessor is going to need quite some time to figure out what's really, really going on. While if you could add uh, that, ex that knowledge, that expertise and that objectivity, with, if you could team him up with someone internal who does know how things are working, but then not having him being the uh, the person who is getting assessed, so someone from another team, for instance, would that work? And what what you what do you think about that as an idea? Um, well, my recommendation would be that yes, you need to combine both. Perhaps not exactly in the way that you uh, that you mentioned there. So. Um, as Rob mentions, self-assessments are uh, a powerful learning tool, 
with the biggest drawback that you indeed don't have this outside view. You're biased towards your way of working, uh, basically in the in a cave, uh, not aware of what might be happening outside of that cave, um, only being, let's say, informed by by uh, blog posts or uh, what you read yourself. It's a way different as an external practitioner. So I, um, in a given month, I see several companies and uh, I always learn still. So as an even continuously practicing SAM assessments, every time seeing new development life cycles and new ways, ways of working, I keep on learning. And uh, this expertise is extremely helpful even during assessments. Um, as you're asking interview questions and, and you're uh, putting to question some practice, uh, I often get response like, okay, what, what is then the normal way of working or what's the recommended way of working? So even during an assessment, you're already coaching a bit as an external practitioner. However, if you want to scale, if you want this initiative to scale uh, in your company, um, you need to have this internal. And so that um, this means that my recommendation would be that to over time, build up the capacity to do internal assessments. Maybe start off with uh, an initial assessment that you do yourself just to get started and, and know the lay of the land. Then once you're ready to do a proper rollout, work with an external practitioner and make use of every bit of information that this person has in their head. Um, and over time, slowly build up the capacity to take on internal assessments. Um, and for me, there's a difference between self-assessment and internal assessments. So uh, I don't believe in, in really doing self-assessments, but I really do believe in a central person that in the, uh, organization or a central team in the organization doing assessments of other teams to have at least some some form of an uh, uh, some outsider view on the on the processes yeah so. that that makes sense so to sum up inviting so asking one of you guys to come in or all of you guys to come in as external help teaching some internal team to uh, how to do assessments what are the details and uh, yeah. intricacies of, of these assessments and eventually uh, give them the, the power to do these assessments internally. Yeah. Um, I would like to continue to Brian if he has something to add up yeah. to, to these great uh, experiences and ideas. So it's it's an interesting psychological effect having a third party come in. So in these so in my history of doing SAM assessments, one of the biggest things I've run into is that when you pay a third party to come in, the budget, the money, things are more upfront. So more time is dedicated, more space is allocated. You get you get time from people. So when they do internals, they don't value it as much. It becomes kind of this sunk cost. And so when you come in as an external, uh, there is you're more likely to get people's focused attention. They're less likely to dip out of meetings. They're more likely to pay attention when they're in the meetings because there's just this psychological effect of we we're paying somebody for this time. Not that you're not paying your employees, but for whatever reason, that just doesn't seem to count. Mm -hmm. um, the other part is, is when you have a legitimate neutral third party, you are generally far more open with what's working and what's not. So this is where people will have a tendency and sometimes in a, it has to do with the interviewer and like Rob mentioned, the interviewing skills, like you, you want to be able to tease this out of people. You want them to feel comfortable. They want to be able to share their story with you because most of the people I've ever talked to have frustrations. And they have frustrations about what should be working or isn't working. And they would love help to do better. They legitimately want to do better. But somebody's not listening to them. And so to them, they start to latch on to the hope that maybe this third party will produce some report that somebody in management listens to. Again, it's the psychological effect of some third party produces a report. They must be an expert. Therefore, we'll listen to them. And then they, they have this hope that things will change. Things will improve. And it's been interesting in my experience that the majority of the benefit I've seen people get isn't as much a SAM score as the process itself. 
is the fact that we've brought people together that didn't normally take the time to sit together, to share their stories about how things work in their area, their part of the process, and then build a knowledge base and then also build notes and experiences that we can report to their management. And it's that whole process, if you in any way can afford a SAM assessment, is invaluable. You will get a positive return on that, or you should. Um, but like we mentioned, I mean, it, but as Maxim mentioned, like it, that's hard to scale, but it is absolutely an invaluable piece. Like it is part of the puzzle. It is not the end all be all, but it is absolutely a critical part of the puzzle, in my opinion, because you can bring that expertise in and they can help you understand where do you fit? How are you doing? How are other people responding to similar problems? Um, and Maxim mentioned about it too. That's part of what we're trying to do with Benchmark is we're trying to help share that knowledge um, so that there's more things you can learn as well from others. Because really what our whole goal is with SAM is to improve software security on the global scale. So that's what all of this work goes into.